in 1511, the then governor of Portuguese India in Goa, Governor Afonso de Albuquerque, sailed from Goa, landing in Malacca, and overtook the Islamic Sultanate that was living here at the time. They set up a Portuguese trading post and a Portuguese community here, but they faced years of hostility from surrounding Islamic Sultanates in Java and Malaysia because the Portuguese were the first European Christian settlement in Southeast Asia. The empire here flourished for 130 years, but 10 years after Albuquerque landed in Malacca, this church behind me, the Church of St. Paul, was built. Today it stands in ruins, but it sits atop Malacca Hill overlooking all of the UNESCO Heritage Zone here in modern-day Malacca. With the opening of the Portuguese port and colony here in Malacca, as you might imagine, many, many travelers from Portugal emigrated to Malaysia, and they married here. They met women, they intermarried, and they had children. Believe it or not, there is still a Portuguese Malaysian colony here in Malacca today. They speak Portuguese. The area that they live is predominantly Catholic. They celebrate Christmas. The street names are in Portuguese. And it's a very interesting mix-up of cultures and religions here in Islamic Malaysia. So, I'm interested to meet some of these people and to see some of their community, meet some of these Portuguese-speaking Malay people. I think we should go find them. So, join me on this Malaysian-Portuguese adventure. Hello, hi, for Nick, yeah. Portuguese settlement. So are there still Portuguese people living here in the Portuguese settlement? Yeah. Yeah. Mixed. Mixed. Yeah. Mixed. The they married with the they maybe the husband or the wife Indian uh -huh. or Chinese. Do they speak Portuguese? The all these yes. Uh -huh. They speak in uh, speak uh, Portuguese. Really? Wow. Uh, okay. The youngster, I don't know. Thank you. Seaside is that way. Uh, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Okay. All right. So this is it. So this is the Portuguese settlement here in Malacca, which is essentially a very, very tiny area of just homes. It's like a suburb of Malacca almost. And so the land for this area, the land for this suburb, was zoned in 1933 to be specifically for the Kristang people, which are basically ethnic Malay Portuguese, people who are descendants of mixed or interracial Portuguese Malay marriages. And I don't know how common it is in this particular community, but among the Kristang people, you will find people who speak Kristang which is like a Creole version of like 16th century Portuguese, which is incredible that that language still exists. And if I could find someone who actually speaks Kristang, that would be like the highlight of this vlog. <laughs> so let's make that the goal. Ah, this one is a prawn. Hi. Ah. Hello. Good morning. Ah. Oh, hi. <laughs> ah, okay. Where do you make the prawns for? Ah, selling the prawns. Where do you? Fresh from the sea. Where do you sell them? Um, we I have my own dealer. Ah, okay, okay. You from where? United States. Oh, United States. Yeah. Oh, America. I came here because I heard there were. E ethnic Portuguese yes, yes, living yes. here. Yeah, correct. Is that Portuguese a lot? Yeah. Is that is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Do people here still speak Portuguese? Yeah. Do you speak Portuguese? Yeah. Oh really? My sister also speak. My mother also speak. Yeah. Everybody speak Portuguese. Here. Yeah. Do you all speak Portuguese? Yeah. My brother also speak Portuguese between speak. Uh, ah. It's okay. You understand? No. <laughs> <laughs> 
But what can you say in Portuguese? Can you say anything? You ask him. My brother was this one. Ah. Ah. What did he say? Huh? Must eat them. Kumi. Kumi. Ah, kumi. That means it's makan. Eat. 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 Uh, yeah. Is it like? Is it like? Um. Is it like a regular? You like that Portuguese? Very good. You speak Portuguese as well. Say hello Portuguese. You can't speak? No, I can't. Ah, you <laughs> I can't speak. Is it is it regular Portuguese or is it like a? Oh, yeah, we we are Portuguese, the descendants of Portuguese. Descendants of Portuguese. Uh, but we are Portuguese from Malacca. Uh huh. Not from Portugal. Portugal, Cristiano Ronaldo is my brother. Oh okay, right, yeah. Ah. So you're very rich then. Is what you. Of course, of course. That's because he doesn't come here very often. Yes! <laughs> That's great. So, you're all of your, like, uh, how, how many generations back do you know? Me. One, two, Forty. three, four. I'm the fourth generation. My four, kids are the fifth. Fourth generation, your kids are the fifth yes. generation. Wow. We all speak Portuguese. Portuguese. Uh, we are ancient Portuguese. And. Uh -huh. Kachoro. Kachoro. <laughs> and is this Kachoro. you know you see the movie the John Rambo? N John Rambo. Ram yeah. oh Rambo. Ah, this one Rambo. Uh, this one Rambo. is a dog Rambo. Hi Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> He's from Oregon. <laughs> And, uh, and people here are are Catholic, not not, not Muslim. No, no, all Catholic. Catholic, yeah. Wow. Oh, no, you're hard. We all very hard. Huh? No, you all, you all uh, live Muslim land very hard. Very hard. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just have to go go on our life now. What to do? Right, right. Yeah. But it's one, uh, consider our our son is the our uh, we all all uh, we all have to protect us, but no, no so lah. Uh. I see. Not only your people, us, very low. We protect ourselves. Uh, we have to protect ourselves. I see. Yeah, but yeah. Government yeah. support, but not much. Not much. Mm -hmm. See, so you guys are doing your own thing out here, so more or less. Go back to Portugal. <laughs> and cook bacalhau. Bacalhau, ah, codfish. Have you guys been to Portugal? No. No. Me, I know me either. <laughs> I haven't been to Portugal either. <laughs> uh, is it? No, I haven't been. But Portugal is very expensive. Too expensive. Yes, right? too expensive. Yes. Malacca It's cheaper than Portugal, that's for yeah. sure. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you so much. Okay, thank you for talking you. to me. See you. All around here. Okay, I'll take a walk around. Thank you. The sea, the seaside is that way. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Wow, friendly people out here, man. Really, really friendly people. I'm gonna head down to the seaside and uh, see who's down there. So that woman who was making that shrimp said she was fourth generation Portuguese. Fourth generation. That's interesting. They actually refer to themselves as Portuguese, not, not even Malay. That is really fascinating. And they speak Portuguese. So I'm going to head down to the seaside here and see uh, who's around. Some older folks. I think the older folks would be the generation that speaks Cristang. I don't know if that was Cristang. They were speaking Portuguese, but I don't know if that was like the Creole version or whatever. And so I don't know any Portuguese, and so I can't really. <laughs> they could have literally just been like, yeah, it's Cristang, it's Creole. I would have no idea. But, people are honest, so. Let's take a walk down to the seaside and see, uh, see what we got. It's kind of like a small version of Christ the Redeemer in Brazil. <laughs> also a Portuguese country, or former Portuguese settlement. Former Portuguese settlement, not a Portuguese country. Well, I don't see too many people down here at the seaside. I see an old sunken boat. 
dust in the mud and a lot of trash. A lot of trash, man. Sad reality of the modern world. Let's take a walk to that pier over there. I don't know if you can see it right in front of that really humongous apartment building. Ah, uh, closed. I can't get down to the pier because it's closed. But it looks like at night, it's a really nice place to sit out and have drinks. So this colony, this Portuguese colony, like I said, dates back to the 16th century. Or I should say the Cristang people. The Portuguese mixed Malay people date back to the 16th century. And the Portuguese were here for 130 years till about the mid 17th century, 1645, I think after which time the Dutch took over. And so when you're walking around, you'll also see Dutch influence in Malacca as well, which is a really, really fascinating cultural idiosyncrasy here in Malacca. But you see, this is kind of like an, a food court here, which is completely closed. I imagine it's normally pretty busy. I don't know, maybe I'm here and it's a Thursday, so maybe I am, uh, I don't know, but look, you see Portuguese seafood right there. There's another Portuguese seafood, uh, lots of Portuguese seafood restaurants actually. Stray dogs all over the place. This is dangerous territory. Hello, what time does this open? What time does this open? Uh, Six, six, oh, okay, thank you. Pictures of, uh, Jesus Christ, and I, maybe, I guess that's Mary. Wow, Portuguese seafood. This place is like, a totally different world than the rest of Malaysia. All right, let's go this way because there's a bunch of growling dogs behind me. So I'm not gonna go back there. Portuguese seafood. Restaurant de Lisbon. Traditional Portuguese seafood. Lisbon restaurant. Wow. This is mind blowing. Portuguese speaking, Portuguese eating, Catholic. Beer house. <laughs> Nothing the patron saints liked more than drinking beer. Seafood restaurant, lots of seafood restaurants. This one looks like it's out of business. Statue of the Virgin Mary there. Old bar there, looks like it used to be really cool. Christmas decorations. Wow. Smells like some animals have been living in there for quite a while. Oh, hi, hello. <laughs> hi. Hello. So, um, this, oh, thank you very much. This is the, uh, the Portuguese area? Uh, where are you from? Uh, United States? Oh, okay. No, you, uh, U.S. U.S. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, what part of the U.S.? Uh, Philadelphia? Oh, okay. East Coast. Yeah. 
So is everyone here, <laughs> everyone here is descendants of mixed Portuguese Malay? Yes. No Malay. No Malay. Mixed Portuguese. Mixed Portuguese. Of course, uh, if you were to say mixed Malay is uh, a little bit hard to, hard to trace, but practically everybody intermarried each other in the same, you know, in the same community. Uh -huh. Since well, so it goes as far back as when they first came. Well, and do you know about how far back your generations go? I can't trace. <laughs> I have my name is Edgar. Uh huh. My surname is Fedrix. Okay, that's definitely not Malay. And do you all speak Portuguese? Oh yeah, our Portuguese. Christang, right? Old Portuguese. Christang. Do you speak? Really? They can understand us. But for us to understand them, it's pretty difficult. Really? It's that? But for them to understand us, it's easy. So is it, it's like a Creole? Yeah, it is Creole. It's Creole. It's Creole. Yeah. It's similar to like, um, in the United States, New Orleans. Yeah. It used to be Creole French. Yeah. yeah. It's like French, but it's <coughs> not really French, you know? Creole. Yeah. yeah. So do you speak like, Creole, but also just regular Portuguese too, or everyone just speaks Cristang? Really? So the Portuguese that you're all speaking is uh, Cristang, basically. It, it's not like normal, what they would speak in Lisbon, for example. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. That's... So we can only understand among ourselves. Right. In a way it's good. In a way it's good, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not spoken outside of this community, really, right? Wow. That's really amazing. I think this one's special, really. Sarawakian Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> the baby. The baby. The mother is a Sarawakian. You know Sabah Sarawak? Oh, Sabah. Borneo. Ah, Borneo. Borneo. The national language is Bahasa Malaysia. Yeah. But we are, when we are in the settlement here, everybody who meets each other, we speak Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Real Portuguese. Mm -hmm. And in the schools, do the kids learn English? Uh, yeah, English, English, yes. But no Portuguese. English and Malay. And so the Portuguese is passed down. Portuguese is Yeah. And so at home, in school they get Malay and English, uh, Malay. and at home they get Portuguese, oh, Creole. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. I appreciate it. I hope I didn't intrude too much. <laughs> thank you guys, appreciate it. Nice to meet all of you. Oh. Soccer field. Someone just cut this grass too. Some bleachers here for the games. Nice and sturdy. Hello, hi. Yeah. Do you just have like noodles? Uh, like a fried meat? Yeah, we have fried noodles. Fried meat. With a uh, fried pig. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Can I? Is chili okay with you? Chili's okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. How much is that? Uh, three ringgit. Three? Okay, perfect. Chili just mild chili. No, as much as you normally do. Oh, there's Spicy's noodles. okay for me, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All the walking around has made me incredibly hungry. I was really hoping to get like some Portuguese seafood or something, but that is not gonna happen. Wow, it's super dark in here. Ooh, some nice sauce under there. That looks good. Yeah, I know, it's not Portuguese, but hey, I'm hungry and this is what's available. Beggars can't be choosers. It's good. It's like soy, I think, and some, some chili. It's got a nice kick to it. Nice spicy noodle dish. 
to round off my day of walking around here in the uh, Portuguese quarter. Mm. I love finding little spots like this. It's completely unlabeled, by the way. Just like the guy next to the store is like, yeah, that place sells noodles. That's gonna do it for me from the Portuguese settlement here outside Malacca. Super, super fascinating place. Very, very quiet. It's basically a suburb, like I said, that was more or less gifted to the Cristang people or the Creole Portuguese people. Hello. Um, from the 1930s. 1930s onward is when they've been living here since 1933. And it's such a mix-up because you're in Malaysia, you know, and you're speaking to people who identify more along the lines of Portuguese than Malay, which is really, really fascinating. And the fact that they only speak Portuguese or their form of Portuguese, Cristang, Creole, to one another I feel like is a great thing because it really not only keeps the community connected with their roots, but it also keeps their traditions alive by passing down the language to the, to the young generation, to the next generation. You know, when a new culture assimilates into a different culture, the first thing to go usually is language. And once you lose the language, you lose that connection with your roots. Like, I am of Italian descent, and I'll be the first to say that I have no connection with my ancestral roots in Italy. And one of the biggest reasons for that is because I don't speak the language. I don't have that linguistic connection to my ancestors. And so, by speaking only Creole, Creole Portuguese, they're keeping their traditions alive and they're in touch with those roots. And it's really just, that is amazing to me. That is just beautiful. So anyway, I'm gonna end it here from the Portuguese settlement on the outskirts of Malacca. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I had a really good time making it, met some really friendly people. And uh, until the next one, if you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to the channel, share this video. It really helps the channel grow, keeps me on the road, allows me to keep making videos. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be the first to be notified when my next videos come out. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. See ya.